Welcome back to Quantum Mechanics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. When we talk about quantum mechanics, there's certainly a lot of names that come to mind. For example, Max Planck, Albert Einstein, certainly Schrodinger's name screams out quantum mechanics. But one person that we obviously cannot neglect is Heisenberg. And in particular, it's his uncertainty principle. And here's another Heisenberg you might be familiar with. Now, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is something that can be said in layman's terms in basically three ways, more ways than this, but here's three ways I kind of like. The more precisely you know the momentum of a quantum particle, the less precisely you know its position. And again, you can even reverse that and say the more precisely you know the position of a quantum particle, the less precisely you know its momentum. A second way of saying this, the more error in momentum, the less error in position. And again, you can reverse that. The more error in position, the less error in momentum. And then probably the simplest way of saying this is one cannot know the position and momentum of a quantum particle simultaneously. Meaning there is always going to be some error in your calculations, what you determine is the possible momentum. There's always going to be error. There's you cannot know these, particle, these particles' position and momentum exactly, okay? You cannot know their exact values. And what Heisenberg did is he came up with this, this formula that you ought to know. And these deltas, these are not typical changes in momentum or changes in position, okay? It's not like you're dealing with a classical particle that goes from x equals 1 to x equals 5, okay? This is the error in in x or the position. This is the uncertainty in position. Likewise, this is the uncertainty of their er or the error in momentum. And if you take those two uncertainties and you multiply them together, that value has to be greater than or equal to h, which is Planck's constant, divided by 4 pi. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another form of this equation and how you get it. Recall that the reduced Planck's constant h bar is equal to h divided by 2 pi. If we solve this for h, we get h is equal to 2 pi h bar. Then I can take this expression for h and plug it in on the top here for h. So delta p times delta x is greater than or equal to 2 pi h bar divided by 4 pi. And canceling parts of the 2 and the pi, we get that delta p times delta x has to be greater than or equal to h bar over 2. Now, the main thing you should understand from this is that the product of the two uncertainties is on the order of at least h bar. Okay, that's one way of thinking about this. Now, how do you actually calculate these uncertainties? How do you determine an individual uncertainty? Well, it's actually a very, very tedious process, and we're not actually going to do that in this video or the next one. Um, I'm going to do it in the video after that. But basically, for any observable, so the observable could be position, the observable could be momentum, that's what this O stands for. If you want to calculate its uncertainty, any uncertainty, what you do is you take the expectation value of the square of its operator. Okay, so remember when we calculated expectation values? So for example, when you want to calculate the expectation value of position, you just threw an x into the integral, right? Well, instead of throwing in just an x, you would throw in an x squared, and you would actually compute that expectation value. You take that. Also, this one, notice, is different. It has the square outside the expectation value nomenclature. So for this one, you actually just take the expectation value of position, and then whatever number comes out of that, you then square that. Okay. You take the difference of those two uh, numbers and then you take the square root of that and that is your uncertainty in that particular observable. Okay, It is a very tedious process but it can be done um, and we'll actually do that in another video. But for now I want to consider a problem that really demonstrates why at a classical level you don't have to use quantum mechanics. You can but it's not necessary. Okay, So consider a 100 kilogram NFL linebacker that runs a 40 yard dash at a speed of 8 plus or minus 0.1 meters per second. So we know that with any measurement, regardless of what it is, whether it's on the classical or quantum scale, there's error, right? So they probably clocked this guy at going 8 meters per second, but there's some uncertainty. It could be 0.1 meters per second above 8 or below. All right, so let's calculate the uncertainty in his position. Let's do that. So to do that, 
let's go over to Heisenberg's uncertainty formula. So delta p times delta x must be greater than or equal to h over 4 pi. Now what we can do is if we're determining the uncertainty in his position, we can actually turn this momentum uncertainty into the uncertainty in velocity. So remember, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So a, a delta p or an uncertainty in p is equal to mass times the uncertainty in velocity because we're not uncertain about the mass. Okay, And then times delta x must be greater than or equal to h over 4 pi. Now, since we're solving for the uncertainty in x, we can divide through both sides by m delta v, and we obtain the expression delta x must be greater than or equal to h over 4 pi m delta v. Now, we can plug in numbers. h is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds. 4 pi is 4 pi, and then this person's mass is 100 kilograms. Now, what is their uncertainty? Well, the speed that he was clocked at was 8 meters per second, but it could have been 0.1 above that or 0.1 below that. In other words, it could have gone from 7.9 to 8.1, which those two numbers have a difference of 0.2. So the uncertainty in his velocity is 0.2 meters per second. And when you actually uh, calculate this, the uncertainty in his position has to be greater than or equal to 2.6 times 10 to the minus 36 meters. Now, let me ask you a question. Is this small enough to be neglected? Well, let's think about it for a second. One angstrom, which is typically a, a distance that we use to measure um, the radii of atoms, one angstrom is 10 to the minus 10th meters. This is billions and billions and billions times smaller than an angstrom. Okay, so this is a ridiculously negligible distance. So yes, of course this can be neglected. And there's no tool that we have really that can actually detect an error of this much. So of course we can neglect this. Okay, And is this distance, is this error going to make a difference of him getting into the NFL or not? Obviously no. And so this is why we can neglect quantum effects on classically sized particles such as people, a vehicle, some kind of ball, an animal, anything. We can neglect quantum effects on any particle of that size. All right, so hopefully this made sense and gave you some intuition on Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. In the next video, we're going to discuss another aspect of this and do an example problem. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe.